In lesson 69, Paul explained how code running on the second Pico core could either continue to run or crash unpredictably when we stop the main program with the Thani stop button or by pressing Control C. He demonstrated how these crashes can generate all manner of error messages and that we often have to power cycle the Pico in order to rerun the program. Our lesson 69 assignment was to create a two core program that would cycle the servo motor alternately from 0 degrees to 180 degrees and from 180 degrees to 0 degrees when the user presses a push button. Also, the push button must not have any effect if it is pressed while the servo is moving and the program must exit gracefully when we press Control C. In lesson 70, Paul added the caution that pressing Control C must cause a clean exit whether the servo is moving or still when the button is pushed. Now I originally planned to use an interrupt to manage the push button, but this means I don't require a separate core to complete the assignment. So I decided to add blinking LEDs like in lesson 67 to our requirement. That way I'll need both cores. Let's have a look at the code. The program starts by importing LED and servo classes. We also import time because we're going to sleep, underscore thread because we're going to be using the second core, and pin because we're going to be attaching the push button. Here we declare the GPIO pins for the LEDs, the servo motor, and the push button. We use the pins to create a red and green LED object and a servo object. And here we declare initial values for previous button release and status variables. The status variable can have a variety of values as shown here in the comments. Status is accessible from both cores and is used to coordinate the activity of the code running on each core. The push button is actually defined in line 51 and 52. Pressing the push button will trigger an interrupt. The manage button function is the handler or interrupt service routine for the push button. Manage button starts by resetting the interrupt handler to none. This will prevent the handler from being re-triggered while it's running. If sufficient time has passed since the last button release, the button press is deemed to be valid. Status is updated and previous button release is set to the current time. The interrupt handler is set back to manage button before we leave the function. The blink function will be run on the second core once we execute line 82. While status is not, stop blink routine. If status is none, both LEDs are turned off. If it's up, we blink the red LED. If it's 180, we turn red LED off. If it's down, we blink the green LED. And if it's zero, we turn green LED off. When status becomes stop blink routine, we exit the while loop and set status to blink routine has stopped. This is part of how we exit the program gracefully. More on that in a few minutes. The underscore thread dot start statement launches the blink routine on the second core. The main routine starts by moving the servo to zero degrees. The blink routine will have turned both LEDs off at this point because status is none initially. Next we examine status in a while true loop. The loop runs continuously, but we only see activity when status is up or down. Before the user presses the button, status has a value of none, so we don't actually see anything happening. When the button is pressed, status is set to up. When status is up, the main logic moves the servo from 0 to 195 degrees in 15 degree steps. This gets us to 180 degrees because of the way in range logic works. At the same time, the blink routine blinks the red LED. When we reach 180 degrees, the main logic sets status to 180. This causes the blink routine to turn red LED off and we wait for another button press. Similarly, when status is down, the main logic moves the servo from 180 degrees to minus 15 degrees in minus 15 degree steps and the blink routine blinks green LED. When we reach zero degrees, we set status to zero. 
This causes the blink routine to turn green LED off and we wait for another button press. If the user presses Control C, we leave the try clause and enter the accept clause. We print a message confirming that we received a keyboard interrupt. And if the servo is stationary, we set status to stop blink routine right away. However, if the servo was moving when we caught the control C, in other words, status was up or down, we let the servo finish moving. Once the servo reaches the end of its travel, we set status to stop blink routine. The main program now waits in a while loop on line 114 for status to become blink routine has stopped. Since status is now stop blink routine, we fall out of the while loop on the second core and wind up at line 77, where status is set to blink routine has stopped. Once we print status, there's no other code for the second core to run, so it comes to an orderly stop. The main core program, which has been waiting in the while loop on line 114 for status to become blink routine has stopped, can continue now. We insert a brief delay to allow the second core to do its housekeeping, then print a message confirming that the program has come to an orderly finish. And here's how it looks. Notice that pressing the button has no effect when the servo is moving. Also, the program ends gracefully if we press Control C whether the servo is moving or not. Here it's moving, and all goes well. And here it's stopped, and all goes well. Well, that's it for this assignment. Any and all comments are welcome. Don't forget to like or dislike the video before you go. And feel free to subscribe. Don't forget the notification bell. We'll talk to you next time.